Yo Atlas speaking and welcome back to the Atlas fanfic channel today I'm here with part 4 of what if I was reborn in Naruto as the sage of six paths successor. The playlist is above and without further ado let the tale begin. Chapter 32 Demon in the Mist She turned her attention back to the puddle when suddenly two shinobi jumped out of it and caught her in a chain made of shuriken. One down, the one on the left said as they ripped Kurinai to pieces. Five of the six jin impaled when they saw the grotesquely mangled and cut chunks of Kurinai land on the ground. Sakura screamed and Tazuna fell on his ass, wide-eyed at the horror he had just seen. The enemy shinobi on the right turned his head towards the older man. Two down, he said as he and his partner charged Tazuna. They got within five feet of the man before they were stopped by an enraged blonde. Naruto stopped their movement by pinning their chain to the ground with one of his swords. The two assailants looked to the blonde as he summoned another two swords. Naruto looked them with cold and calm eyes. You just fucked up in one of the worst possible ways, he growled at the two enemy ninja. For some reason, the two more experienced ninja felt something they never thought a twelve-year-old could make them feel. Fear. Meizu, detach the one on the left said. All right, Gozu, the now named Meizu said to his brother. With a quick flip of their wrists, they detached the chain from their gauntlets. Meizu charged Naruto straight on while Gozu tried to circle around him. Naruto raised his left sword and blocked an attack from Meizu and Mumble, Ninpu, Chikyu Ryu Bunshin. Ninja Art, Earth's Dragon Clone after saying that a clone came out of the ground and shot a fireball at Gozu, who was still trying to circle around him. S-H-I-T, he said as he dodged just enough to not get killed by the fire. But not enough to get away without any burns. Ah, he hissed in pain as his left arm blistered and bubbled from the burn. Gozu! You bastard, I'm gonna kill you! Meizu yelled as he continued to attack Naruto. The blonde turned his attention to him and began to block and sidestep all of Meizu's attacks. The five other jinin all had different reactions to how Naruto was handling the two more experienced ninja. Kibo was wide-eyed and trying to fathom how the doe could be fighting two enemy ninja at once. Sakura was still shocked still by what happened to Kurinai. Sasuke was seething. How did the doe get so strong? I will make him tell me even if I have to beat it out of him. Shino had an eyebrow quirked up. He hadn't known that Naruto was that good, he knew he was better than most of their class, but to be able to fight two enemy that seemed to be around Chunin level impressed him. However, unlike the others he was about to act. Throughout the fight he was slipping some of his insects over to Gozu and Meizu without anyone noticing. Hinata was also waiting for her moment to strike. She had her Byakugan activated and waited for an opening to strike. And she found it. Naruto kicked Meizu in the stomach and got some distance. The slight off balance Meizu had was all Hanada needed. She rushed to get in front of her target, you're within my field of divination. 8 trigram, 32 palms. And then she began to systematically shut down Meizu's Tinketsu points. Once she finished her combo of 32 strikes Meizu fell to the ground unconscious. Meizu! Gozi yelled and tried to rush at Hinata to avenge his brother, but when he tried to move he fell to the ground. W what the hell, he said with a suddenly weak voice. Looks like you are starting to feel the effects my insects had on you. They will eat away at your chakra until either you die, or I call them back. Shino said as he walked up to Gozu. D damn you. Gozu said before he was knocked unconscious due to lack of chakra. Naruto put away his swords. Good job Hinachan, you too Shino. Hinata smiled at Naruto and Shino merely nodded. How the hell did you get that much power dobe? Sasuke demanded. Naruto just ignored him and looked over to the trees. So Kurina sensei learn what you wanted to know? Everyone except Sasuke turned to the trees to see Kurinai standing there smiling at how her students reacted to this kind of situation. Yes, I did Naruto-kun. 
Hinata, Shino, Naruto, good job in not locking up in this kind of situation. But Kiba, Sasuke, Sakura, you need some work. I expected my team to freeze up since this would be their first time in a life or death situation, but not you too. Sasuke and Sakura were ignoring her, but in different ways. Sasuke was still staring at Naruto, waiting for an answer. And Sakura was too overjoyed that Kurinai was still alive to care about what she was saying. Kurinai noticed this and just sighed in frustration. She shook her head and looked to the now bound Meizu and Gozu. All right, if you guys will excuse me for a moment, I'd like a word with these two, and you as well, Tazuna. Said man gulped and got up and followed Kurinai, who was dragging the unconscious brothers behind her. About an hour later Kurinai and Tazuna walked back out to where the Jinin were waiting. All right, everyone gather round. I have a story to tell. A somewhat angry Kurinai said to get their attention. She went on to explain the situation about the Demon Brothers and their employer Gato. She also explained why they were after Tazuna and that Gato had basically made all of Wave Country his personal playpin. So, I already sent word to Kanoha to pick up the brothers, but I'm gonna let you guys decide it if we continue on with the mission. Personally, I wouldn't, but I know a few of you well enough that after hearing what condition Wave is right now, that you would stay to help even against my orders. She said as she eyed Naruto and Kiba. Naruto caught on that she was talking about him and scratched the back of his head and smiled sheepishly. Well, you just pegged me for what I was going to say. Yeah, I'm gonna stay on the mission. It wouldn't be right to just let this Gato guy get away with what he's done to those people. Hinata nodded and said, I'm with Narakuen either way. Kiba huffed. I guess if the Dobe is going to help out, then I might as well. Shino nodded in agreement with his team. Sasuke just gave his one-syllable answer HN. Sakura was a little hesitant. She knew she would hold everyone back based on what just happened, but she eventually agreed because she just couldn't do anything other than what her sasuke Kuen would do. Kurina nodded and smiled. She turned to Tazuna and said, All right, looks like we'll continue with the mission. Tazuna nearly jumped with joy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am honored that you all would risk your lives for the sake of Wave. Another hour passed as the two teams made their way. They had just come to the edge of the water where they were supposed to meet the man who would ferry them across when a thick mist came in. They looked around for a moment, but noticed a small boat come through the mist. The rower looked between Tazuna and his shinobi escort. There are too many of you to fit in the boat. I'll have to make another trip. Not at all, Kurinai said. You can fit six, right? The rower nodded. Then me and Naruto will walk. The Jinin all looked at her like she was crazy. Um, Sensei, there aren't any bridges or any way across by foot. Sakura said a little embarrassed for Kurinai. Naruto just shook his head. No Sakura she means like this he said as he took a few steps to the water. Once he reached the edge he placed one foot on the surface and continued to walk on the water. Safe to say that the other Jinin, minus Hinata, dropped their jaws on the ground. How the hell can you do that? Kiba asked. Karina answered for Naruto. It's a higher level chakra control exercise. By channeling chakra into your feet you can make yourself stick to any surface and walk on it. Water is harder for people to walk on because its surface changes constantly, but with enough practice it becomes like second nature to walk on it. When are you going to teach us how to do that? And how does the dobe know that already? Kiba asked again. Naruto sighed. Honestly dog breath, I don't know why you call me dobe, I was the second place in the academy, and that is only because of my written exam scores. Kiba scoffed at him, you yeah, whatever. You not getting the written part down just shows how stupid you are. Naruto was gritting his teeth and Hinata frowned at Kiba. Kiba suddenly shivered when he felt a little killing intent leak form Naruto, but Naruto calmed himself before he went overboard. Whatever, 
Let's just go. Once they reached the shore, they began to walk towards Tazuna's house. However, once they got out of the boat, Akuma began to growl. Kiba looked down to his partner. What is it? Smell something. He took a few sniffs for himself and his eyes widened. Guys, there's someone coming. Fast. Hinata activated her Byakugan and looked around. She gasped and yelled, Everyone get down. Once they all ducked a massive sword wiped over their heads and embedded itself into the side of a tree. On top of the handle stood a man with bandages covering his face and a curry headband on the side of his head. Heh, looks like Meizu and Goza got done and by a bunch of no-name brats. The man said, Well, since I don't know any of you, and I doubt you know me, introductions are in order. I am Momochi Zabuza, Demon of the Hidden Mist. Chapter 33, Demons on Parade Heh, Looks like Meizu and Goza got done and by a bunch of no-name brats. The man said, Well, since I don't know any of you, and I doubt you know me, introductions are in order. I am Momochi Zabuza, Demon of the Hidden Mist. Naruto, Kiba, Sasuke, with me. Shino you're on support, Hinata, Sakura, protect Tazuna. Kurinai ordered pulling out a kunai and getting into a defensive stance. Kiba got into his and Akumaru's stance and asked, Sensei, who is this guy? Kurinai responded without taking her eyes off of the enemy shinobi in front of them. Momochi Zabuza, a rank nukneen from Kirigakure. Also known as the Demon of the Hidden Mist. Zabuza chuckled darkly at them. Well, well. Looks like someone does know me. Hey brats, do you want to know why I'm called a demon? He said while he let his killing intent leak out little by little. He didn't get to tell them when a blonde beat him to the punch. The freak killed his entire graduating class in the academy. Naruto said in a matter-of-fact tone. The other Jinin looked at him. What? My dad had me memorize the bingo book. He said in an offended tone. Zabuza just started to laugh a little more. Well, kid, bet your little dad won't get to see you again after today. Unless you give me the old fart without any trouble. Naruto's normal happy-go-lucky eyes changed as soon as Zabuza stopped talking. They changed to a cold and uncaring glare. His fight-or-die switch was flipped. Enough talk. He mumbled as he slowly brought his hands to his wrists and summoned his swords, never dropping his glare. Zabuza smirked. So the blonde thinks he's tough shit, huh? He said as he reached down and pulled his sword out from the tree. He dropped down to the ground and hefted the slab of iron onto his shoulder. He cocked his head and let out a sadistic chuckle. Well kid, you can eat shit. He said as he left out the full extent of his killing intent. Everyone froze. Feeling this much killing intent for the first time made their eyes widen and their knees shake. Sasuke nearly brought a kunai to his throat when something snapped them out of their fright. There was a laughter. A deep and evil-sounding laugh. But it wasn't coming from Zabuza. Naruto just glared at Zabuza, letting a smirk come across his face. Zabuza looked at the kid and noticed that his eyes had changed again. Instead of the blood-chilling blue, they were red with black slits for pupils. The whisker mark his face were rougher and his hair stood more on end. You call that killing intent? The blonde asked in a deeper voice than his normal jovial tone. If that's all, why don't we get started? Kiba and Sasuke were openly gaping at Naruto. They had just near killed themselves due to the amount of killing intent they had just felt, but the blonde just shrugged it off and laughed. The rest were looking at him confused, except for Hinata, who had returned to her ready stance and activated her Byakugan to track the masked enemy. Zabuza was surprised. He had never met anyone who could just shrug off his killing intent like that. He began to chuckle and smirked at the boy. I like you, kid. Too bad I'll have to kill you. You would have made a perfect tool for me to use. Naruto frowned and readied himself. 
Like I said, enough talk. Couldn't agree more. Zabuza agreed and then flew through hand signs with blinding speed. Kirigakure no jutsu. Hiding in the mist technique. A dense fog covered the area and obstructed everyone's view. Well, everyone but Hinata. She scanned the area and spotted him. Narakuin, three o'clock. He nodded and mumbled, Ninpu, Chikyu Ryu Bunshin. A second Naruto rose from the ground next to him and let loose a fireball towards the direction Hinata pointed out for him. Shit! Zabuza yelled as he narrowly dodged the flame. Not bad kid, didn't expect a clone to come at Dash, he was interrupted by another boy and his dog. Getsuga! Passing Fong, Kiba yelled as he and Akumaru attacked Zabuza with the Inazuka clan technique. Zabuza ducked and spun around the two and planted a kick to both of them as the passed. TCH, how do you keep finding me? He wondered aloud. Kiba groaned as he got up, but then chuckled. You can fool an Inazuka's nose, or a Hyuga's Bikugan. And I bet by now Shino has his bugs getting to you. Zabuza's eyes widened a bit, but then he smirked. This'll be more fun than I thought it would be. Ha, yeah, I might take the girl's Bikugan for myself. Naruto, who had heard this, scowled. He went through a few hand signs and mumbled, Enough hiding, Futon, de Tapa. Wind release. Great breakthrough. A powerful gust of wind can over the area kicking up rocks and uprooting a few bushes, as well as dispersing the fog. Karina used this chance to catch where Zabuza was and cast a Jinjutsu. Megan, Jubaku Satsu. Demonic illusion, tree binding death, a tree formed behind the disoriented Zabuza and its roots caught him and held him in place. I have you now. Karina said as she came out of the tree and sunk a kunai into Zabuza's neck. But to her dismay, instead of blood coating her knife, water spilled out of his neck. Zabuza splashed into a puddle of water and appeared next to the jonin. Too bad for you, bitch. He said as he brought down his sword. He was inches from hitting Karina when his movement was stopped. Naruto was struggling to hold the stronger shinobi back. He had blocked the attack with both of his swords cross guard. Hey, Sensei, mind getting the fuck back? He yelled as he continued to hold his block. Kurinai jumped out of the way letting Naruto drive the larger blade to his right. He jumped back to gain some distance. Zabuza smirked. What, don't want to keep playing with me brat? Naruto just looked into the older man's eyes and said one word. Boom! A glowing mark appeared on Zabuza's sword and exploded. The force knocked the wind out the Nukneen but didn't hurt him all that much. But it did succeed in knocking his sword from his hands. As the blade flew through the air a Naruto clone came out of the ground and snatched the sword, quickly sinking back into the ground. You little shit. I will get you slowly. Zabuza roared as he pulled out a kunai and charged the blonde only to be forced back by a swarm of kunai as well as a fireball. He looked around and noticed the dog boy, his sensei, and the emo-looking one had surrounded him. Naruto pointed a sword at him and calmly said, Stand down, you're outnumbered and without that sword, a lot less of a threat. Zabuza laughed at the kid. You think I always had that sword? I'll show you just why I'm known as a demon. He threw Kanai at the three others making them dodge as he charged Naruto. He brought out two more Kanai and engaged him in Kinjutsu. They seemed evenly matched for the moment, even with Zabuza having to dodge the Kanai, Shuriken, and passing attacks from the Inazuka. The fight continued for a few minutes and neither gave any ground. Naruto blocking and dodging just as much as he attacked. Zabuza brushing off small cuts and delivering just as many. Then they clashed and locked weapons together. Who is this kid? And what the fuck is with his eyes? Zabuza frantically thought as he stared into Naruto's crimson eyes. He felt colder and weaker the longer he looked into the eyes and decided to break the lock by kicking Naruto away. Naruto skidded to a stop, 
still on his feet. As soon as he had his footing he came right back at the nuke mean with just as much force as before. What the f-u-c-k? Zabuza yelled after each exchange of blows. Naruto maintained his calm expression, but on the inside he was different. Mindscape. Shit, we won't be able to hold out for much longer at this rate. Naruto exclaimed with a slight hint of panic in his voice. Kurama snorted, this wouldn't even be a fight if used a tail or two, not that tiny amount of chakra to enhance your reflexes. Naruto shook his head. No, if I use any more of your chakra everyone will be able to feel it. I'm not ready to reveal this to everyone. Especially Hinachan. He mumbled the last part, but with Kurama's large ears he caught it. He tilted his ears back and lowered his head. He sighed inwardly, knowing one of the boy's biggest fears was Hinata rejecting him when he finally told her the truth. Listen kid, she's gonna find out sooner or later, but you need to pull out all of the stops to take this guy down. I think he's about at Kakashi's level and even with the backup you have you can't beat him without this. Naruto thought for a minute. He sighed and said, fine, but only half a tail. No cloak. I don't want everyone to piss themselves when they see this. Kurama nodded and Naruto slipped back into reality. Battle. Naruto was finally overpowered by Zabuza and sent flying into a tree. He slid down the tree appearing to be knocked out. Zabuza huffed. Well brat, you gave me a damn good workout. I bet in a couple of years you could hold your own with the best, but you die today. Hinata looked in shock as Zabuza charged the down Naruto. They were out of her range and the others were currently preoccupied with his clones. Naruto! She closed her eyes and cried. Everyone stopped, even Zabuza's clones when they heard the scream. They turned their heads to see what they thought would be a dead Jinin. But what they saw surprised them more than anything. Naruto was holding Zabuza by both of his wrists, stopping his kunai from hitting him. A small shroud of red chakra enveloped him. Naruto opened his eyes and stared into Zabuza's. You wanted to see a demon? Well, here I am. Chapter 34, Fox vs. Demon Everyone stopped, even Zabuza's clones when they heard the scream. They turned their heads to see what they thought would be a dead jinin. But what they saw surprised them more than anything. Naruto was holding Zabuza by both of his wrists, stopping his kunai from hitting him. A small shroud of red chakra enveloped him. Naruto opened his eyes and stared into Zabuza's. You wanted to see a demon? Well, here I am. What the dash was the only thing Zabuza could say before a blur of blonde hair smashed into his face and sent him flying. He skidded on the ground and rolled to his feet. He gingerly touched his now broken nose and glared daggers at the kid who broke it. He then looked to the shocked shinobi around him and his equally shocked clones. Well, the fuck do you think you're doing? Kill the fuckers! Zabuza roared at his clones. They turned back to the other shinobi and continued fighting. Sasuke was being pressed fighting just one clone. He was distracted and letting the clone get into his guard too many times. He was awestruck by the display of power that Naruto was showing, and he was furious. What the hell? That dove should be nothing compared to me. I'm an Uchiha, damn it. Why is he stronger than me? He mentally growled. He turned his attention back to the clone right as it struck him in the gut, sending him flying. You should really pay attention. It just might keep you alive long enough to make this interesting. Clone said with a sadistic chuckle. Sasuke got up and growled at the clone. I can't lose to someone like you. I'm the last Uchiha. You are nothing to me. He roared as he charged the clone with a newfound strength. Kibo was held up by two clones and was trying to deliver a hit with his Gitsuga, but he was narrowly missing and dodging attacks. Shino was able to take one of the two clones he was fighting down when he caught it in a swarm of Kikachu, 
but now that the other clone was on the lookout for any bugs and was proving to be more difficult for the young Aburam. Hinata had been faring well for herself. The Zabuza clone she was facing was smart to not get into a physical fight with her. One hit to any of his Tenketsu and he would pop. So they were having a game of keep the clone away from the Hyuga. Sakura was backing Hinata up from a distance with the occasional kunai while she stood next to Tazuna protecting him. Kurinai already took out two of the four clones after her and she was slowly working her way to take down the last two. She knew it would take her and at least Kiba and Naruto to take down the original, but to her surprise Naruto was actually pushing the Rouge Umbu back. Zabuza glared at the blonde who was pushing him back. Hey brat, the fuck is with that red chakra? He asked. But he was only answered with a feral growl. Naruto blurred out of sight and appeared next to the masked man. Zabuza brought up a kunai and blocked the first sword, but had to dodge the second. This gave Naruto the opening he was looking for. He threw a kunai at him and flew through a series of hand signs. Kunai cage bunch and no jutsu. One kunai became fifty and continued on their path to Zabuza. To the man's credit he blocked all but five, and those five only grazed him. Ninpu, Cage Bunch and Tetsuo Tongji and Naruto shouted and ten of the kunai turned into Naruto clones and attempted to stab the demon of the mist, but ended up killing a rabbit that he used for a kawarimi. Naruto looked around for his target. His head snapped around to where he could sense the building of a lot of chakra and looked over to the water. Zabuza was standing on top of hit and roared, Sui Tun, Suryad no Jutsu. Water release, water dragon bullet technique, a massive water dragon came out of the water and charged Naruto. Naruto used a Kawarimi with one of his clones and let the dragon kill that instead of him. Naruto then went through his own hand signs and took a deep breath. Futon, Rinkuden. Wind release, drilling air bullet, he slammed his palm on his stomach and let out a powerful torrent of wind. Zabuza didn't have the time to dodge so he just cut off the chakra to his feet and dropped into the water. Naruto smirked as he and two of his clones saw this. They each did the same set of hand signs. Rai Tun, Rai Sho. Lightning release, Thunder Palm, they said at the same time. A shroud of lighting covered their hands and they drove their hands into the water Zabuza was still under. They applied more chakra into the palms and the lighting became more intense. After a moment they stopped and Zabuza crawled out of the water slowly, his muscles jolting every other movement. He slowly tried to stand up, but ended up leaning against a tree. With his now lack of chakra and heavy damage, his clones dispelled and that let the others on Naruto's team to join them. When Naruto saw them coming he cut the supply of Kurama's chakra. That was a mistake. He pitched forward and nearly fell on his face due to the sudden chakra exhaustion. He was caught by Hinata and Sakura and they held him upright. Kurinai walked forward with a kunai in her hand. Well, looks like this is the end for you Momochi Zabuza, she said as she brought the kunai up to through, but stopped when she saw two Sinban impale his throat. A hunter ninja came down to the now dead Zabuza and picked up his body. The hunter turned to their group. Thanks for giving me the opening. I've been hunting him for months and just got him. He said with a soft voice. Karinai smiled and nodded to the hunter ninja. The hunter left with Zabuza's body. But right before they left Naruto weakly tried to stop them. W wait, he's still alive. He said while panting. But as soon as they left he couldn't sense them anymore. He cursed under his breath and fell to unconsciousness. Narukuin. Hinata said in distress as he fell unconscious. She laid him down on the ground and checked his vitals. She let out a sigh of relief. He was only suffering from chakra exhaustion, but when she used her Byakugan, she gasped. He has multiple cracked ribs and a broken collarbone. Karina's eyes widened at the fact that he was injured so heavily, yet he continued to fight like nothing hit him. Besides the injured bones, 
He also had several cuts on his body and his coat and shirt were basically shredded. We need to treat his injuries as soon as possible. Tazuna, how far is your home? She asked with a forceful tone. Tazuna responded quickly. Another mile up the road. Okay team, we going to move quickly. She said as she picked up Naruto and turned to move. A few minutes later they arrived at Tazuna's home and were greeted by a woman around the same age as Karinai. Father you're home. She said in a happy tone. She then paled when she saw the bleeding child in the woman's arms. Come in quickly. Inari. Get me some hot water right now. She said as she rushed back into the house. They hurried into the house. The woman turned to Karinai and said quickly, My name's Tsunami, follow me, there's a room we can use to treat him. Karinai nodded and followed the woman. They laid Naruto's bleeding form down on a futon and a little boy brought a bucket of hot water. Thank you Inari, Tsunami said as she started cleaning the blood off of the boy on the ground. Inari didn't reply but just angrily looked at Karinai and Naruto. Why are you even here? He asked. You just going to die? He yelled as he ran from the room. Tsunami sighed as she began to bandage Naruto. Sorry about him, he's had it rough recently, we all have. She mumbled the last part, but Kurinai was able to catch it. She decided to let it go and turned her attention to Naruto. She almost gasped when she saw one of his cuts already healing. When Tsunami saw it, she did gasp. H. How? She asked no one in particular. She shook her head and asked Karinai what all is wrong with him. A few fractured ribs and a broken collarbone, here I'll go get Hinata, she can help you with this more than I could, she's the only one of us with any form of medical training. Karinai said as she left the room. A small girl with lavender eyes came through the door and addressed Tsunami with a slight bow. I am Yuga Hinata. She introduced herself. H. How is Narakuen? She asked. Tsunami smiled at the girl. He's not in danger or anything. Actually his wounds are already healing. I just need your help setting his collarbone. Hinata nodded and helped to the best of her ability. After a few minutes they had Naruto bandaged and his bones set. They left the room to let the boy rest and went into the living room with everyone else. Sakura looked to Tsunami and asked the obvious question. How is he? Tsunami let out a slight sigh and said, He's out of immediate danger and should heal up nicely, but it'll take a while, broken bones can take a while. Hinata spoke up and said, hey, Actually his bones were already beginning to mend and his cuts were already halfway healed. I'll think he'll be back and ready in about a week. Everyone looked at her in disbelief. Kiba openly gaped. How is that possible? He half yelled half asked. Hinata just shrugged. I don't know. For as long as I've known him he has been a quick healer. Sauce growled. When he wakes up, I'm gonna get him to tell me how he got this strong. I won't let that dough be better than me. Chapter 35, Downtime Everyone looked at her in disbelief. Kiba openly gaped. How is that possible? He half yelled half asked. Hinata just shrugged. I don't know. For as long as I've known him he has been a quick healer. Sauce growled. When he wakes up, I'm gonna get him to tell me how he got this strong. I won't let that dough be better than me. Everyone looked at Sasuke as he got up and stalked out of the room. He went out the front and slammed the door behind him. Kiba smirked. Looks like the emo has his panties in a bunch. Sakura turned to him and smacked him in the back of the head. Don't talk about Sasuke Kuen like that. Kiba growled as he rubbed the back of his head. The fuck is wrong with you, you bitch. Before Sakura could hit him again, Kurinai stepped in and cut them off. That's enough. I understand that you guys are exhausted and short-tempered after that, but don't take it out on your comrades. 
she said as she scowled at the two. They bowed their heads in embarrassment. Akumaru winned at his master and Kiba rubbed the top of his head. Sorry, Kurinai-sensei, he said. But seriously, how was Naruto able to stand up against a guy like that? Sure he was the second place in the academy, but he wasn't anywhere near that good before. Kurinai sighed and pinched the bridge of her nose. I only know this because I'm friends with his mother, but he had an agreement with his father that he wouldn't show off too much in the academy. His training sessions with his father, from my scene, are hellish. Hinata also took the time to put her two cents in. He also wears very strong resistance seals. They make it harder for him to move and are a way to constantly train while going about day-to-day -day activities. She said with a somewhat inspired tone. The other Jinin shuddered at the thought of having to train like that. Well, everyone but Shino, who just raised an eyebrow. Kiba shook his head and whispered something, but it was too quiet to hear. Sakura had an uneasy look on her face. Does that mean Naruto is stronger than Sasuke Kuen? She thought. Cha, of course not. No one can be better than Sasuke Kuen. He was rookie of the year. Inner Sakura argued. But wasn't Naruto supposed to be the rookie of the year? Sasuke only did better than him in the written exam. They both had perfects in all of the other exams, and Sasuke Kuen couldn't make cage bunchin like Naruto. Outer Sakura countered. Inner Sakura actually didn't have counter for that and was silenced. But before Sakura could continue with her inner debate, Shino put in his opinion. Kurina sensei what exactly was that red chakra Naruto-san was using? Maikakai bugs were severely agitated by the flux of power it gave and forced them away from Naruto-san's location. Kiba and Sakura looked at Shino with an eyebrow raised. Red chakra? They said at the same time. Hinata fidgeted for a moment. I, I also saw Naruto Kuin use some sort of red chakra. What does that mean? I'd never seen anyone other than him with two different chakras. Kurinai's eyes widened as she heard this. She began to worry about Naruto. If his seal was breaking, my Kami helped them all. She hadn't noticed when everyone stopped talking and began looking at her. She snapped out of her worry and shook her head. That's something Naruto needs to tell you, not me. She said. Excuse me, I need to go check on Sasuke. She excused herself before anyone could continue to question her. The four Jinin that were waiting for an answer were disappointed. Kiba huffed. Tisk, even Kurinai-sensei, won't tell us. I guess I'll have to join Sasuke and have that dope tell me what the hell is going on, he growled. Hinata scowled at her teammate. Kiba, she scolded. Kiba visibly flinched and Hinata continued. Narukuin would tell you if he wanted. He is badly injured right now and I won't have anyone treat him badly while he heals. She then stood up and went towards Naruto's room to check on him. Shino also looked at his teammate. I concur with Hinata-san, I believe if Naruto hadn't stepped up to fight Zabuza, then one, if not all, of us could have been killed. He too got up, but went outside. Kiba scowled. Since when did Shino become friends with him? Sakura continued to debate with herself as she got up to go talk to Hinata. Damn that dobe! How the hell is he that strong? I can't let him be better than me. Sasuke growled as took his anger out on a nearby tree. Kurinai walked up behind him and put her hands on her hips. I never thought I would see one all-powerful Uchiha throwing a hissy fit because he isn't better than someone who works themselves to death on a daily basis. She chided him. Sasuke turned with an intense glare. Oh? And what would low-born trash like you know? He said with a holier-than-thou tone. Kurinai sneered at the child. And then she did something that neither of them expected. She backhanded him. Sasuke fell to the ground with a split lip and his eyes wide. He looked up at her and she went off on him. You need to get over yourself. She exclaimed. 
I will not have a jinn in under my authority talk down to me like a child. I have half a mind to report your insubordination to the Hokage himself. If you do not fix you attitude soon, someone is going to get hurt, and when they do it will be you that is blamed. She then promptly turned with an agitated sigh and marched back into the house. Sakura walked into the room where Hinata was taking care of Naruto. How's he doing? She asked in quiet voice. Hinata looked up from where Naruto was laying down. She looked her in the eye and Sakura could easily see the sadness in her eyes. Hinata looked back down. H. He's doing better. His breathing has calmed down. A. And most of his cuts have healed. He just has the broken bones and chakra exhaustion to worry about now. She said in a quiet tone, her voice with a slight quiver. Sakura got a sad look on her face. She could see the slight shaking of Hinata's shoulders. You really like him, don't you? She said, her voice barely a whisper. Hinata stiffened for a moment, but relaxed and slowly nodded her head. Ever since we first met. She mumbled, almost to herself. He, he, he was always there, ever since I could remember. He's always smiling and laughing. I was so shy when I was younger, but he always had this way of getting me out of my shell. I looked up to him for the longest time. As someone I could aspire to be, following behind him, doing things the way he would. Over time it became more than just admiration, I just hate seeing him like this, hurt, and, and not able to smile. It just breaks my heart, she said as she began to sob. Sakura smiled sadly. She put a comforting hand on Hinata's shoulder and just let her cry it out. Once she began to calm down she softly said to her, I'm going to go check on the others, why don't you come with me? We still have a job to do. Hinata slowly nodded and wiped her eyes. They both got up and walked back to the living room. Karinai wailed back into the house and gathered the jin in, except Sasuke who was still outside seething over being disciplined. All right team listen up, I've got some bad news. She said and instantly got to their attention. As it stands, that nuke mean, Momochi Zabuza, is still alive. This got a gasp out of the jin in, save Shino, and caused their eyes to widen. But Karina-sensei, how is that possible? He was killed by that hunter Nin. Sakura exclaimed in an almost fearful tone. Karina shook her head and looked to Kiba. Kiba, you want to be a hunter Nin, why don't you explain what a hunter is supposed to do once they kill their target? Kiba paled instantly and gulped. T they're supposed to cut off the head and destroy the body as soon as they are killed. Just touching or moving the body can be considered treason. Karina nodded. And that hunter Neen not only touched the body, but made off with him. She eyed the reactions of the Jinin and noticed that Sakura was starting to shake and Hinata was giving worried glances to Naruto's room. But, I think that he is in about the same boat as Naruto, with all the injuries and chakra exhaustion he had. So I think we have about a week to get ready for his next attack, and this time I believe he will have backup. We don't know anything about that hunter Neen, so keep on your toes. After she finished talking Sasuke decided to come back inside. He had a somber look on his face and was surprisingly calm. Kurinai got a smirk on her face and continued. But, for the meantime, we train. Sakura, Sasuke, do you know the tree walking exercise? She asked. When she received a negative response she went through her head for ideas. Are like, Shino, I want you to help these two learn tree walking while Kiba works on water walking. I'll be following Tazuna as his bodyguard, and I want you, Hinata, to watch over Tsunami and Inari. She saw her team nod and sighed in relief. She had just about enough drama for one day. Okay then, we'll split into night shifts dash she was interrupted in mid-sentence by a force coming up from the ground. That won't be necessary Karina-sensei, I think me and the other clones can handle that. The Naruto clone said as he came completely through the ground. 
The boss made us five with a little more chakra than normal so we can keep going as sentries for a few days. Oh, and before I forget, one of the other clones who had Zabuza's sword got popped by his friend. Sorry, but they got his sword back. The clone said while he scratched the back of his head. Kurinai sighed. Him having that sword back would be a challenge they were going to have to face. But she just smiled at the clone. All right then, while we sleep you guys can keep watch. The five clones saluted her in a comical fashion as they phased back into the ground, earning them a giggle from Inanna and stifled snort from Kurinai. Zabuza's hideout. Now to remove the bandages. The hunter Neen said as he went to remove Zabuza's bandages. But before he could touch them his wrist was caught by the dead man. Don't worry Haku, I've got it. Zabuza said to the now named Haku. He then proceeded to unceremoniously rip out the Senban from his neck with a slight grunt. Hey now, be careful or you might actually die. Haku said with a teasing tone in his voice. Zabuza shook his head and laid back down. I swear you can be more brutal with those Senbons than I can be sometimes. He said to his underling. So, how bad is it? Well besides the fact that you got your butt kicked by what appears to be a twelve-year-old, Haku teased and got a low growl from Zabuza. He just sighed and gained a serious tone. Your left forearm is fractured and you have some extreme nerve damage. You won't be able to move properly for about a week, and even then you won't be at a hundred percent. And besides the minor cuts and gashes you obtained, you have some pretty bad chakra exhaustion. I don't know why though, you only use the Kiridikur no Jutsu and Suryuden. Haku listed. Zabuza grunted. The exhaustion is from that little bastard in the shades with his bugs. I think they have a Hyuga, a Inazuka, a Aburame, and what appears to be the last Uchiha loyal to Kanoha in the peanut gallery. That pink-haired girl is no threat, but that sensei is a bitch with her Jinjutsu. And that damn blonde. That kid is no Jinin, no way no how. At least a high Chunin. Plus those swords he was using weren't normal. I had to make sure to channel Chakra into Kubikuri Bocho and my Kanai to make sure he didn't just slice through them. He grumbled. Haku perked up for a moment. Oh, and speaking of your sword, I was able to intercept the clone that took and got it back. Zabuza chuckled a bit. Good job, Haku. At least that little shit didn't get a total victory out of this. Then a new voice came in. I would like to know... How in the flying F-U-C-K did Momochi Zabuza, demon of the hidden mist, get the ever-loving S-H-I-T kicked out of him by a little fucking brat? The voice came from a rather small man as he walked into the room. Haku growled at the small man. Do not speak to Zabuza-sama that way filth. One of the man's bodyguards, thugs, reached for his sword while saying, You want to die a pace of dash? He was cut off however when he saw his own sword pressed against his neck. Do you? Haku said coolly to the thug, giving him the same question. The small man shook his head and glared at Zabuza. Zabuza, I swear if you fail me again you won't see a single Rio for me, or the next sunrise. When he finished he turned and left out the door. One of his guards casually followed while the other tried to get out as soon as possible. Haku huffed at the man. Zabuza Sama, I don't like working for a piece of filth like him. Zabuza just sighed. Gado has a lot of money. Money we need. And as soon as this job's done we won't need money like that for a long while. So just bear with it. He said as he laid his head back down and drifted off to sleep. Tazuna's home. The next day the two teams woke up to the sounds of cooking food. Kurinai was the first to wake up and offered to help Tsunami help cook for the group but she told her she didn't mind and that she liked to cook for large groups of people. Once everyone made it down to breakfast, it was painfully obvious no one had a good night's rest. Kurinai sighed and Tsunami looked to the peel-eyed girl and noticed the sad look. Once Tazuna made his way down and turned to Kurinai and asked, How's the blonde kid doing? 
Kurinai shrugged. I'm no medic, but I think he might wake up today. Tazuna nodded his head and sat down with an audible grunt. Kid's too young to be getting himself hurt like that. He mumbled. Kurinai caught that but let it go. Personally, she agreed with him. Naruto and the rest of the jinn in here were much too young to have to experience this kind of experience, but they were shinobi. They would have to face these situations all the time in the future and needed to be prepared for when worst comes to worst. As they ate Inari came into the room with a somber look on his face. He ate in silence and walked back up to his room, but not before taking a glance into Naruto's room. The boy shook his head and walked to his room. After the meal Kurinai walked outside and had Shino start showing Sasuke and Sakura how to do the tree walking exercise. Surprisingly, Sasuke was rather quiet about the fact that he had another jin in showing him how to do something. Maybe Kurinai's little outburst to him brought him down a few pegs and opened his eyes a bit. She had Kiba work on his water walking, and since Hinata already knew both techniques and was the only one with medical training, was left to take care of Naruto. Kurinai turned to Tazuna. Well, I guess we're off. Tazuna nodded and lead her to the bridge. After Shino explained how to do the exercise, Sakura had it down pretty well. She was able to walk up to a high branch on the tree without a problem. Sasuke, on the other hand, had a little more trouble making his way up the tree, but was progressing. Remember, too much chakra will force you off the tree and too little will make you slip. Find the right balance and keep the current of chakra steady. Shino explained to Sasuke after he was propelled from the tree. Sakura turned to Shino and raised an eyebrow. You know Shino, I think you could make a good teacher. Shino raised an eyebrow as well and responded, Hmm, I might look into that. It would give me more time to study my hive. Sakura only gave him a shaky smile and went to go sit down. Before she got too far Shino stopped her. Sakura-san, while you are able to walk up the tree, why don't you keep going until you are low on chakra? This method will help you master the technique as well as improve you small chakra reserves. She would have tried to turn down the idea if Sasuke had not nodded at her to keep going. She let out a small sigh and went back to climbing. Back at Tazuna's house Hinata was removing Naruto's bandages with Tsunami's help. The older woman looked at Hinata with a sly smile. So, is Mr. Blonde and injured your boyfriend? She said in a teasing voice. Now, this Hinata may be much more confident, but there were still limits. She blushed furiously and stammered. A, -A and a no. I am mean, not yet, W wait. She babbled in embarrassment. Tsunami giggled at the girl. Sorry, sorry. Didn't mean to be a tease. But you do seem close to him. Hinata looked away with a heavy blush. Well, he is most likely my only friend. Tsunami chuckled and then looked down at the unconscious boy. She frowned a bit when she saw his eyes twitching and moving underneath his eyelids. Either he's dreaming, or he's going to wake up soon. Mindscape. Damn it! How long is this going to take? Naruto yelled to no one in particular. Kurama sighed as he shook his head at the hype blonde. Listen Kit, not only did you take some heavy damage, you used an imperfect cloak for a good amount of time. You might have mastered two tails by now, but that doesn't mean you can use an imperfect cloak without consequences. Just hold tight, you'll be awake in few more hours, why don't you get some actual sleep till then? Kurama said in a halfway irritated tone. Having an impatient Naruto hang out with him while he was trying to focus on fixing his injuries was just a tad annoying. Naruto sighed. Fine, but I won't like it. He said as he began to fade out of the mindscape. You don't have to like it, just get out. Kurama roared to his leaving host. Naruto just lazily waved him off as he faded out. Kurama huffed. I swear, if the Gaki wasn't there to raise him, he would be a real piece of work, he'd probably wear neon orange clothes and never stop talking. He mumbled to himself. 
real world. About two hours later, Naruto slowly opened his eyes. The first thing he saw was a sleeping Hinata laying on his chest. He smiled weakly. I'm back. Dot. He playfully whispered in her ear. Chapter 36 Battle on the Bridge About two hours later, Naruto slowly opened his eyes. The first thing he saw was a sleeping Hinata laying on his chest. He smiled weakly. I'm back. Dot. He playfully whispered in her ear. Instead of getting the startled reaction Naruto was hoping for, Hinata woke up calmly with a hint of confusion. She slowly opened her eyes and tried to blink the sleep from her eyes. She turned to face him and smiled sleepily. Hey you're awake, she said in a half-awake drawl. Naruto snickered, yeah and you're not. He couldn't help but get a huge smile at the slight scowl he got from his friend. She tiredly huffed at him and let her head fall back onto his chest. Naruto took a sharp breath in as he felt the effects of having a few cracked ribs. You know my bones haven't healed yet, he whispered loudly. She rolled her head to look at him in the eyes. His smirk instantly faded when he saw tears welling in her eyes. You know I hate seeing you get hurt like that, she said with a slight sniffle. Naruto shook his head and smiled sadly at her. I'm sorry for worrying you like that, Haim. After hearing him call her by a pet name Hinata's eyes flew open as a harsh blush covered her face. She quickly got up and walked mechanically to the door. I am going tea to tell everyone you're up, she said as she opened the door and closed it behind herself. Naruto almost openly laughed, but the pain made it die down to a hearty chuckle. A few minutes later a relieved-looking Sakura and smiling Kurinai walked in. Good to see you up, Naruto Kuen. I swear if anything too bad happened to you while I was leading your team your mother would give me personal treatment at the INT division. Kurinai joked. Her being Anko's best friend gave her some insight on how sadistic Anko could be. Both Naruto and Kurinai shivered at the thought. Sakura looked a little confused, but just shrugged it off. They both looked down at Naruto as he struggled to prop himself up into a sitting position. You shouldn't try to move yet. You need your rest, Sakura chided trying to get her teammate to sit still. Naruto quirked an eyebrow at that. Usually the pinkette wouldn't care one way or the other if he was hurting himself. She would normally just scoff at him and fawn over her Sasuke Kuen. What changed? Naruto just shrugged and finished propping himself into a sitting position with a little help from Kurinai. Yeah, whatever. He said to the girl. So, how long was I out? He asked as he turned to Kurinai. Sakura scowled at him for blowing her off and was about to scold him when Kurinai answered. About a day and a half. You still have some damage to your ribs and your collarbone is still fractured. She reported in a no-nonsense tone. Naruto sighed and looked off into the distance. His eyes glazed over sightly and Kurinai and Sakura both eyed him cautiously. Both for different reasons. Sakura was looking for signs of a concussion. Kurinai was worried about his seal. The Uzumaki Kaun hadn't made it public knowledge that he could converse with the demon or use his powers without any issues. So at this point Kurinai thought his seal might be weakening. When he snapped back to attention he looked them in the eye. I also have a few strained tendons and still am low on chakra. My bodily injuries should be healed in about three days, but I need to concentrate on recovering my chakra. Kurinai and Sakura just blinked a few times. Sakura opened her mouth to say something, but closed it just to blink again. This happened about three times before she could find the right words. But, no one heals from these kinds of injuries in just five days. She said, almost like she was trying to convince herself. Naruto shrugged. I do, he responded coolly. Sakura stammered a few more times but stopped when Naruto started to try and stand. This time Kurinai tried to stop him. You really should be trying to stand she said with a hint of worry in her voice. 
Naruto just gave her a lazy wave as he stood shakily on his feet. Good thing I brought one of these. He mumbled as he summoned a crutch from a seal on his arm. Sakura actually noticed for the first time that Naruto had nothing covering his forearms and noticed an assortment of elaborate seals and a thin line connecting them all. Another line, about half an inch thick, went up his entire arm connecting to a seal on his shoulder. Naruto noticed her staring and explained. Most of them are resistant seals. These five along my wrists are storage seals. He said as he pointed to the five small seals on each of his wrists. They look more like tattoos. Sakura mumbled. Naruto shrugged and began to hobble out of the room. In the living room Hinata and Shino were waiting on the couch for Kurinai to give them orders, and Tazuna was waiting by the door for Kurinai. Tsunami was in the dining room cleaning up after the breakfast they had. The first one to notice Naruto was up was surprisingly Inari. Oh, looks like the weakest one is up. He mumbled next to his mother. Tsunami nearly jumped when she heard him talk. She scowled at her son and turned to see Naruto standing behind the table. He scratched the back of his head and smiled shakily. You wouldn't have anything to eat, would you? He sheepishly chuckled. Tsunami hurried and made him some food. He thanked her and wolfed it down. Inari's glare at Naruto didn't go unnoticed. So kid, what's your story? You seem to have some sort of problem he said as he wiped his face after finishing his food. Inari sneered at him and turned to walk away. I don't know why you are even here. Gato is just going to kill you. The boy mumbled as he left the room. Tsunami sighed and shook her head. I'm really sorry about Inari. He's had it a little rougher than the rest of us. She apologized. Her tone was normal, but Naruto could see her sadness in her eyes. Naruto shrugged. Don't worry about it. I guess it's hard to lose someone at this young of an age. Well, at least harder for most. He said in a reassuring tone. Tsunami wanted to ask how he found out, but decided against it. Something in his voice just seemed to explain it for himself. I'm Tsunami by the way, Inari's mother. She said with a small smile. Naruto nodded and returned the smile. Uzumaki Naruto. He replied. He then slowly stood up and limped his way into the living room. Hinata was standing by the door to the living room waiting for him to finish his food. She still had a slight blush, but she smiled and helped him onto the couch. Shino made room for him to sit down. He then proceeded to plop himself onto the cushioned seat and let out a sigh. I hate getting injured. He complained in a childish fashion. Tazuna looked at him and laughed. W where's the badass ninja that kicked that guy's ass the other day? All I see is some brat. He said as he laughed. It wasn't a mean or sarcastic laugh. It was a hearty laugh, one that comes from the gut. Truth be told, he hadn't laughed like that in years. It felt good. Tsunami walked in to see what was so funny and quirked an eyebrow at the scene she was seeing. All she was an annoyed blonde flicking off he father while he was one yo mama joke from rolling on the floor laughing. After Karina walked in with Sakura Tazuna began to sober up. After a minute he wiped away a stray tear and looked to Karina. Well, should we be going? He said with a little mirth left in his voice. Karina nodded. Shino and Sakura will join us today. Kiba is watching over Sasuke as he finishes his training on tree walking. Tazuna and Tsunami both looked at her blankly. Tree walking? They both asked at the same time. Naruto made a quick hand sign and another Naruto appeared. The clone limped to the wall and stuck to it. The real Naruto turned his head to Tsunami. She means like that. Tsunami only nodded. Shocked by both the clone and the fact it could defy gravity. After that, quick explanation, Tazuna and his three escorts left the building. Naruto looked to Hinata. So, what are you up to? He asked curiously. 
Hinata blushed a little. I'm to guard the house and Tsunami-san if she leaves the building. She responded a little quickly, or defensively. Naruto just nodded in response to that. They sat there for a few minutes in awkward silence. Naruto was the first to break the silence. So, wanna play cards? He asked. Hinata shrugged. We have nothing better to do. Two more boring days went by like this. Finally on Naruto's fourth day of recuperation he was able to walk without a limp or the help of a crutch. He asked Kurama and he said he'd be back in fighting shape in another day and a half. He walked out onto the front porch and stretched his stiff muscles. It had been, well, he couldn't remember the last time he'd gone this long without training. It felt wrong. He walked down the porch stairs and went over to a tree stump in front of the house. He sat on it and crossed his legs. He put his hands on his knees and closed his eyes. He let his chakra roam and find a downed leaf on the ground about a foot away from him. He concentrated on the leaf and forced his chakra to cover it. Slowly he brought his chakra back, but still clung onto the leaf. A bead of sweat ran down his forehead when his concentration was broken. The hell is that face for Dobe? A particularly worse for where Sasuke asked as he walked up to where Naruto was sitting. Naruto sighed and his right eye twitched a bit. The hell team? Couldn't you see I was concentrating? He asked a little annoyed. Sasuke let out an amused breath. Really? Cause it looked like you were about to shit yourself. He said with a slight smirk. At this point Naruto was confused. Was Sasuke being playful? Banter was normal between the two, but this didn't have the holier-than-thou attitude behind it like normal. Okay team, you're starting to freak me out here. Since when did you do witty banter, and not oh I'm an Uchiha, look at my brilliance, you can see me sparkle with glory kind of speech. He asked in a confused tone. Sasuke growled at that. Yeah fuck you too Dobe. He marched back into the house, but not before Naruto gave him a comeback. You wish team. He called laughing at Sasuke's louder snarl. Once he calmed back down he resumed his chakra exercise. The next day Naruto did a stress test on how good he felt. In the early morning before anyone woke up he went out to the forest and had a little sparring match with five of his more stable clones. After thoroughly kicking their asses he started to walk back when he noticed someone in a clearing. He stopped and watched her from behind a tree. She seemed to be gathering herbs. But Naruto had a bad feeling about her. With the heightened senses he obtained from constant work with Kurama, his sense of smell pick up on something. She smelled just like the hunter Neen that grabs Zabuza, and surprisingly male. Naruto shuddered at the fact that the she was actually a he. That's just wrong. He mumbled to himself. He decided to turn and leave. Let the fighting be saved for tomorrow. The next day Naruto was back to 100%. And they all figured that Zabuza was as well. That day they all accompanied Tizuna to the bridge. Naruto left a legion of clones back at the house to protect Inari and Tsunami. He figured with the trash they were facing, they wouldn't be against pulling a cheap shot like taking them. Once they got to the bridge they noticed that it was encased in a dense fog. Naruto can you clear this? Kurinai asked. Naruto shook his head. Too dense, there is a lot of chakra going into this one. He responded. H help. A raspy voice said. Tazuna looked down to his left and gasped. Jiro! What the hell happened? He asked his beaten and bloodied worker. I it was a demon. He said and then proceeded to pass out. They then heard a startling laugh. The mist cleared just enough to reveal Zabuza and his masked help. Well kid, you ready for round two? He asked as he glared sadistically at Naruto. Naruto smirked. Yeah, I guess I could kick your ass again. He boasted. Zabuza snarled and charged him sword in hand. 
Chapter 37, Rage They then heard a startling laugh. The mist cleared just enough to reveal Zabuza and his masked help. Well, kid, you ready for round two? He asked as he glared sadistically at Naruto. Naruto smirked. Yeah, I guess I could kick your ass again. He boasted. Zabuza snarled and charged him sword in hand. Naruto motioned his arm over his right shoulder. As Zabuza neared him, Naruto let out a snarl. I'm not holding back this time. He roared as he summoned a short sword and swung it. Kubikuri Bocho and the short sword met with a loud clang and sparks from metal grinding against metal. The rest of Team Kurinai jumped back. Sakura. Cover Tazuna. Shino, you're with me. Sasuke, Hinata, Kiba, take the hunter Neen. Kurinai ordered her Jinin. They all nodded and went to do their assignments. Sasuke rushed the hunter Neen and started engaging him in Taijutsu. With their speed near equal the hunter brought out a Sunban and Sasuke responded with a kunai. The two weapons clashed over and over again until they became locked in a struggle to overpower on another. Sasuke smirked at his opponent. You're not half bad, he grunted as he blocked another attack. You as well, but not good enough to defeat me. Haku replied. He dodged a slash to his chest and replied with a kick to Sasuke's stomach. He dodged the kick by quickly backpedaling. He brought his knife back up and smirked. Maybe, but I'm not alone. He said as Kiba jumped over him to attack. Getsuga! Kiba roared as he and Akamaru preformed their clan technique. He looked like a cyclone of wind as he ripped his way through the air to his target. However, right before he hit, Haku dove to his left and jumped over Akamaru's attempt. However, now that he was in mid-air, he couldn't dodge the Hinata's attack. She came at Haku with a palm strike aimed for the boy's heart. Haku was able to block with his left arm but instantly felt the chakra spike from the Hyuga's attack painfully shut down his arm's movement. He landed roughly, losing his footing and rolling onto his back. He quickly rolled out of the way to dodge a hail of kunai from the Uchiha. Haku rolled to his feet and got into a defensive stance. However, his left was wide open due to his arm hanging limply, not responding at all. He muttered a quiet curse and looked at his three opponents. Looks like this won't be easy. He muttered. Kiba smirked. Looks like we got him now. He barked. But before he could get ready for another attack, his eyes widened. Haku was doing a string of one-handed hand signs and once he stopped what looked to be ice mirrors rose all around them. What the hell? Kiba growled. Hayutan, Makio Hayosho. Ice release, demonic crystal ice mirrors, Haku said as images of the masked shinobi appeared in each of the mirrors. The three jinin stood together in defensive stances. Back to back. Hinata activated her Byakugan to try and pinpoint where Haku was. Once she caught him she threw a trio of shuriken. Only for them to bounce off the mirror and for him to disappear. Kiba tried to catch him by smell but was failing. Damn it! Fight us like a man you coward! He roared. He was responded with a sinbon in his leg. He cursed from the sting of the needle. Sorry, I don't want to kill you but if you continue to fight, I will have no choice. Haku said as each of his images raised their right hands. They were all wielding Senban. The three Jinin swallowed nervously as they readied themselves for the oncoming attack. As Naruto's ninjato clashed with Zabuza's sword, he couldn't help but smirk when the blade started to corrode from Kurama's chakra. Zabuza's eyes widened when he saw his blade begin to rust and chip. He jumped back to get a little time to inspect the damage. He had never seen anything be able to rust, or even chip, his sword. He looked at the ninjato the boy was using and nearly gasped. The kitsune no Kiba was glowing red from the influx of chakra. Naruto slowly swung the blade in front of him and a trail of red light followed the blade. As Naruto increased the speed of his swings the light grew brighter. 
Once the light nearly looked solid, Naruto stopped swinging, and the light shot out towards his opponent. Kitsu no Ikari Fox's light, Naruto roared as the light sped towards Zabuza in the form of an X. Zabuza dodged and noticed that once it hit the side of the bridge it cut right through it. Zabuza gulped and decided to dodge that attack at all costs. Hijitsu, Mushidama Secret Technique, Insect Sphere, a monotone voice called out as a large swarm of insects appeared around Zabuza. He cursed and used his superior speed to get out of the trap as quickly as possible. However, he was tagged by more than a few of them. He cursed when he felt his chakra start to sap away. He cursed louder when he was forced to dodge a fireball from a blonde clone that appeared next to him. Naruto looked around for where Kurinai was and noticed she wasn't around, maybe waiting for an opening for a Jinjutsu. He shrugged and looked back to the enemy shinobi in front of him. All right, time to finish this. Tajua Cage Bunch and No Jutsu. Multi Shadow Clone, with a large puff of smoke, the area of the bridge they were in was covered in Naruto clones. Zabuza paled when he noticed that not only were they all solid shadow clones, but they all wielded the same glowing blade. Even if the clones were slower and weaker than the original, being outnumbered was never a good thing. And with the bugs taking up a lot of his chakra, he couldn't afford to use too many high level jutsu. Fuck this shit! He roared in a fit of rage. He threw his sword, causing it plow through over a dozen clones before one of them brought down its sword and cut the slab of iron in half. Zabuza roared in anger and flew through hand signs. Sutton, Daibakufu no Jutsu. Water release, great waterfall, he snarled as he launched his most powerful Jutsu. A massive vortex of water formed around him and shot out and annihilated all of the clones. Once the water died down, Zabuza fell to a single knee. He was breathing hard and low on chakra. He tried to stand but was caught by a large tree that appeared behind him. Karinai slowly slid out for the tree as she looked to her trap prey. It's over, Zabuza, she said to the panting shinobi. Zabuza let out an evil chuckle as he looked past the jonin. Yeah, it seems Haku just finished up with those jinin of yours he said weakly. Naruto's eyes widened as he heard Zabuza. He quickly turned and ran to where the others were. He was caught off guard by Zabuza's words and tried to sense the other's chakra. It was low. Too low. He ran till he was inside of the Dome of Ice. Just in time to block the last rain of Sinban from hitting the down Kiba, Sasuke, and the shakily standing Hinata. They all looked like they had been used for target practice and when he turned to Hinata she started to fall. He caught her and started to panic. Hinata! Come on stay with me here! He pleaded. She looked up at him and smiled weakly. Oh, hey Narakuen, she said weakly. I, I'm as sorry. Narakuen. She choked out as tears came to her eyes. Hinata! No! No! Please and no! Naruto screamed in panic. His best friend, the first friend he had ever had in his age group, was slowly dying in his arms. Na Narukuen, she said as she brought a weak hand up to his now crying face. I never got to, to say this, but I. Her eyes glazed over all the light leaving them. Her hand fell from his face and her body went limp. Naruto's eyes widened. He slowly began to shake his head. No. 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 Not you, anyone but you. He choked. Haku frowned. I'm so sorry. He whispered to himself. But this didn't go unnoticed. Haku looked up to see Naruto, sitting there perfectly still. Then it happened. A wind so powerful it destroyed all of Haku's mirrors and caused him to slide across the bridge. Kurinai's Jinjutsu was broken and Zabuza fell back to his knees. Awestruck by what he was seeing. Oh no! 
Make Hammy save us all. Corinne I said. She knew exactly what was coming. She had been there. That terrible, terrible night. A deep red chakra enveloped the boy. He slowly laid Hinata still down and turned to Haku. When Haku saw his eyes, they were dead. No emotion, no light. They were crimson eyes that could see nothing. Skin started to peel from the boy's face as he closed his eyes. A dark dome of chakra enveloped him and the only thing that could be heard over the massive force of the wind was just one pain-filled cry. Gray-ah! Chapter 38 Taming the Beast A deep red chakra enveloped the boy. He slowly laid Hinata still down and turned to Haku. When Haku saw his eyes, they were dead. No emotion, no light. They were crimson eyes that could see nothing. Skin started to peel from the boy's face as he closed his eyes. A dark dome of chakra enveloped him and the only thing that could be heard over the massive force of the wind was just one pain-filled cry. Gray-ah! Poor Haku never knew what hit him. He covered his head with his arms to protect himself from the overwhelming force the cry gave off. When he lowered his arms his life ended. A red-clawed hand reached out of the dome and crushed the teen's head like a grape. Zabuza's eyes widened as he saw the one he thought of as a sun lie on the ground. Headless and gushing blood. His shock quickly turned to rage as he lunged for his broken sword. He charged the dome of chakra and gave a blood-curtailing roar. He dodged the arm that reached out to claw at him. Ignoring the pain of his left appendage being forcibly ripped off as he continued to charge the beast that took his son, his only light in his dark life. He was within arm's reach of the dome when he was stopped. For tails sprouted out as the dome disappeared, leaving behind a barely human form, covered in red chakra and had two elongated ears. It stood on all fours and snarled at the former demon of the hidden mist. Zabuza stood there in mid-stride, his remaining arm raised in the air holding his broken sword. His eyes continued to glare at the monster before him, but he was unable to move. Two of the beast's tails were stabbed through the man's legs, another going through where his liver once was, and the fourth piercing his heart. He glared at the beast until a copious amount of blood spewed from his mouth. His eyes rolled back and his limbs went slack. His hand dropped the once legendary sword and his neck went limp. Zabuza, the demon of the hidden mist, was dead. The mist cleared to reveal the gruesome sight. Shino was already brought to his knees due to the massive amount of killing intent and the overbearing chakra. The normally emotionless Jinin was shaking as he looked at Zabuza be ripped apart by the demon that held him. Kern and I was shaking her head, sweating profusely. The nightmares she had of that horrid night returning all at once as the beast stood in front of her. Sakura had fainted from the initial blast blast of Chakra, as well as Tazuna. Please, Kami. Save us. Keep, keep it away. The terrified Jonin pleaded in terror. She was now on her knees shaking, holding herself as tears streaked across her face. The demon she once thought of as a nephew stood its hind legs and looked up to the sky. It gave a second, louder, more intense, pain-filled roar. It turned its back on the trembling Jonin and Jinin. It turned to the dark blue-haired girl who lay there with a peaceful, resting race. It lowered its head to the girl and stopped moving. Its shoulders began to shake and tremble. It sat on its haunches as it continued to tremble, giving a light, and quiet whimper. Kurinai, after another moment, stopped her trembling. She looked confused at the thing that sat in front of her student. Was, was it, crying? She dared not move. She dared not do anything to provoke it. She just sat there and looked, observing the beast as it trembled and softly cried for the fallen girl. Mindscape. Kit! 
Get a hold of yourself, damn it. You're taking too much chakra. Kurama roared in worry. Naruto sat there on his knees in front of his cage. His head down and his eyes glazed over. He was unresponsive. He didn't move. He just sat there, forcibly pulling Kurama's chakra around him. The bijou wasn't even freely supplying the chakra. It was being taken. How Naruto had the will or strength to do this while in this state was beyond the ancient demon. Damn it, Naruto! If you continue to take my chakra, you are going to kill yourself. Your body can't handle the pressure of any more tails. Is this what you want? To die? To kill yourself in regret? The demon roared. Its ranting was stopped when a voice spoke from behind Naruto. What if it is? The voice said. What if the boss has had enough with this cruel world? We never asked to be this child of prophecy, we never asked to be adopted, we never asked for you to be imprisoned in us, and we never, never asked for her to be taken from us. The voice continued, it getting louder and louder with each statement. It stepped out of the shadows and stood behind Naruto. It looked exactly like the boy, the blonde hair, the clothes, even the whisker marks. But the only difference was the eyes. They were red where the cerulean blue once was. And where the whites once were, was now black. The thing sneered at the fox. I think it's high time I ran the show for a little while. I am what the boss really is like. I am the one he relies on when he fights. I am his darkness. I am his truth. And now I am him completely. Dark Naruto said. He reached down and pressed his hand to the boy's back. Naruto jerked. His head now raised, but his eyes still dead. His head tilted up and his eyes opened completely. He let out strained and muffled whimpers. His eyes began to shake as the whites slowly became black. One of his eyes completely turned, and once the other started to turn, it stopped. A glowing red chain came out of the ground and wrapped around Dark Naruto's arm and ripped his hand from Naruto's back. The evil entity snarled and clawed at the chain, only for more to wrap around its limbs and hold it at the air. Naruto! A new voice called. This voice was not like Dark Naruto's though. It was feminine. Pleading. And scared for Naruto. Please, Naruto-chan. Don't let this take you. It pleaded. Please wake up. I know it's hard. I know you're in pain. I know you don't know what to do. But there is still a way. The girl, she's still alive. You need to hurry. Please, come back to us. Come back to me, Narichan. Kreira. Naruto roared as he brought his hands to eyes. He covered them with his palms and writhed in the ground in pain. After howling once more he laid still. Tears streaked down his face. He slowly smiled. Thank you, Kachan. He said as he faded from the mindscape. And oh oh oh! You bitch! You damn bitch! Dark Naruto roared as he also faded out. Kurama sighed. Crisis averted. Well, looks like you really pulled through, Kushina. The fox sighed. The bridge. Naruto stood there. Kurama's chakra disappearing as quickly as it came. He fell to his knees. Bleeding and breathing hard. He was already starting to heal, but he was still covered in his, and his enemy's, blood. He looked down at Hinata and slowly, painfully reached out a hand. He gripped a sunbon that was in her neck and carefully pulled it out. After a second nothing happened. But then she coughed. And another. She began to cough and gasp for air. Her eyes flew open as she struggled for breath. She almost had a heart attack when she saw the boy she loved. Covered in blood. Tears streaming down his face. Na Naruto. 
she screamed as he fell to his side. Hinata was alive, but Naruto was slowly fading. Chapter 39 Confessions Naruto stood there. Kurama's chakra disappearing as quickly as it came. He fell to his knees, bleeding and breathing hard. He was already starting to heal, but he was still covered in his, and his enemies, blood. He looked down at Hinata and slowly, painfully reached out a hand. He gripped a sunbon that was in her neck and carefully pulled it out. After a second nothing happened. But then she coughed. And another. She began to cough and gasp for air. Her eyes flew open as she struggled for breath. She almost had a heart attack when she saw the boy she loved. Covered in blood. Tears streaming down his face. Na Naruto. She screamed as he fell to his side. Hinata was alive, but Naruto was slowly fading. Kurama sighed as his host returned to his domain. You really overdid it this time, Kit. The demon deadpanned. He looked down at a sheepish-looking Naruto. The boy was fidgeting and glancing around. Kurama sighed in agitation. The hell are you looking for, Kit? This is your mind, you know where everything is in here. Speaking of which, when are you gonna get me out of this damn sewer? Do you think I like having wet fur? Naruto looked up at the fox like he forgot he was even there. Hmm, oh sorry Kurama. Hold on, he said as he closed his eyes. After a moment of concentration he snapped his fingers and the sewer changed to a cave at the top of a mountain. The cave overlooked an expansive forest that seemed endless. There were a string of torches lining the cave walls giving it a warm and, homey, kind of feel. Naruto opened his eyes and looked around. He scratched the back of his head and grinned. This any better? Kurama looked around and nodded slowly. I like the view, he commented. Yeah, this'll do. Now, back to business. You know you nearly killed yourself doing that little stunt of yours? I don't condone those kinds of actions and I'm questioning ever giving you support again. The fox snarled. Kurama really did not like actions like that. Self-harm that day owes no help to anyone is a sign of extreme weakness to him, and Naruto took it to the near-death level. It was safe to say the ancient fox was livid. Do you even realize what you did? You not only nearly killed yourself, me included, but you also revealed yourself to those other humans. That Jonin woman is especially frightened by this. She thinks you seal has malfunctioned, or even broken. And hell, it nearly fucking did. If you ever attempt to do anything like that again, I will force my way out of in your weakened state just to kill you before you do anything stupid. You understand me? Kurama roared. Kurama's roar nearly knocked Naruto over. He had to brace himself to keep from being flung out of the cave. Once the roar stopped Naruto looked up at Kurama and closed his eyes and bowed deeply. I swear, I will never even think of doing something like that again. It's just, I never thought, that, I'd ever, have, have to see something like that. It. It broke me. He admitted. I am sorry, Kurama. I guess I lost myself for a good moment there, huh? He smiled sheepishly as he looked back up to Kurama. The beast sighed and shook his head. I swear, kid, one of these days your luck isn't going to help you and you'll know the consequences. But, due to your body dealing with the pressure of holding a second-level cloak and being able to forcibly repress it, you have not only put yourself into a coma, you have mastered a third tail. Naruto's eyes widened. I'm able to use a third tail. That's awesome. Wait, I'm in a coma. He went through his varied emotions in a fraction of a second. He gripped his head in worry and started biting his nails. How long will I be out? He asked his tailed comrade. Kurama shrugged his shoulders. Around five or six days? I don't know. He said as he rested his head on his paws. His eyes started to close. 
You forced a lot of chakra out of me and now I'm tired. Get some rest, kid. Your system needs it. He said as he yawned and fell asleep. Naruto nodded. Yeah, I think I'll do just that. The next week went by uneventfully. Hinata was too busy with taking care of Naruto's crippled form to care about much else going on. She hardly ate and didn't sleep very much. Naruto's skin had healed after a day and a half. Once that was done it was just a matter of calming the poor boy down during a number of erratic seizures and fits of whimpers. It was almost like a bad dream for the poor girl. Naruto was suffering, and there was barely anything she could do. The best she could do was try to calm him down and wipe away the sweat. On the fifth day the door to Naruto's room opened and Sakura walked in. Hinata, she called softly. You need to eat something. Come on, dinner's ready. You need your strength to keep up with this. She said, hoping her words would reach the grief-stricken girl. But they didn't Hinata just sat there holding onto Naruto's hand as small tears rolled down her face. Sakura sighed. Hinata, I know how you feel about him, but would you want you to suffer because he got hurt? Would Naruto want you to starve yourself after he worked so hard to fight for you? To fight for all of us? I don't know much about him, even though he's my teammate, but I don't think he'd want to see you like this. Now come on, you need to eat. She walked over and carefully took Hinata's hand from Naruto's and slowly stood her up. She helped the Hyuga heir into the dining room and sat her down to eat. Kurinai eyed her students carefully. Shino hadn't said a word since the fight. She almost thought he was in shock, but when asked to do something he did it without complaint or any sign of difficulty. Kiba and Sasuke had recovered from their injuries just as fast as Hinata did, but still didn't talk much. Their pride was hurt. They were both taken down by Haku, and then Naruto not only defeated him, but Zabuza as well. They didn't know that Naruto had lost control of the QB, or that he had it either, but they still felt like the blonde had beaten them on every turn. This was especially had to take for Sasuke. He saw Naruto somewhat as a rival, and for him to show such a clear gap in their abilities was like being slapped by Kurinai all over again. Tazuna and Tsunami didn't know what was with the ninja, but they didn't entirely care. They were worried for Naruto, but they were also celebrating Wave Country's freedom. After the battle on the bridge concluded, a villager came up to Tazuna and informed him that Gato was dead. His men had found their employer dead in his sleep and left. No money meant no food, which meant there being no reason for the mercenaries to stay. Wave was freed, and the bridge was almost completed. They couldn't more happy. So what was wrong with the shinobi? Sure the boy was hurt, badly, but he would get better. Right? On the seventh day, the bridge was completed. The teams were preparing to leave, but Naruto was still down. His seizures slowed down, but he still did seem to be waking up any time soon. Kurinai frowned. There was something more going on here than just regular chakra exhaustion. Hinata, she turned to her still grief-stricken student. Can you tell me what his chakra network looks like? She asked softly. Hinata slowly nodded and activated her bloodline. Once she looked at the blonde she paled. He, his, his chakra network looks, broken. A lot of his Tinkitsa points have severe damage, one just broke. I, I think he's dying. She wailed and fell to her knees. Kurinai's eyes widened. Hinata, get up we need to get back to Kanoha as soon as possible. Everyone! Get your gear and get moving. Let's go! Kurinai carried the unconscious Naruto while she and her Jinin hurried back to Kanoha as fast as their legs could take them. That evening they arrived and took Naruto straight to the hospital. Within minutes he was in ICU. Once the doctors took him Kurinai's side and looked to the Jinin. Everyone, go home. That's in order. You need some rest and time off your feet. Go to your families and I'll report to the Hokage. 
she then sunshined out of the hospital to the Hokage Tower. Hinata hurried out of the hospital, but wasn't heading home. She was running as fast as she could to the Uzumaki estate. Senaru needed to know his son was dying. Senaru sama. She yelled as she entered through the gate. Cole rushed out of the house after sensing Hinata crossing the barrier. Hinata, what's wrong? He asked. He then saw her distressed look. Naruto, he he's in the hospital. He's dying. She said as she collapsed. Unconscious from physical and mental exhaustion. Cole's eyes widened. Anko! He called into the house. She came out with a confused look. What? She asked. Take care of Hinata. Naruto's hurt and in the hospital. I'll be back. He yelled as he left in a blur of motion. He arrived at the hospital and rushed through the building. One of the doctors tried to stop him from entering the operating room, but he just shoved him across the room. Get away! My son needs me! He roared as he entered the room. All of the doctors and nurses back away when they felt his killing intent. He went over to check his condition. Hinata was right, he was fading, and fast. He picked up his son and said, Don't worry son, all will be fine soon. He then summoned the king of hell with the Naraka path and placed him in its mouth. Heal him. He told the being. It closed its mouth and gave a sickening chew. After a few chews he opened his mouth and let Naruto out. The boy laid there for a second before slowly opening his eyes. The first thing that he saw was a flying Hinata coming right for him. She had woken up and quickly followed Cole without his knowing. She made it there right as Naruto was waking up and did the first thing her instincts told her to do. A running tackle hug. When she collided with the blonde he caught her in a tighter hug than she was going to give him. Hinata. I'm so sorry. I promise I will never leave you again. Hinata I love you. Chapter 40 Good News Hinata. I'm so sorry. I promise I will never leave you again. Hinata, I love you. And with that the poor Hyuga was out like a light. Everyone in the room sweat dropped and Naruto let out a loud sigh. For years, Hinata, for years, you went four years without fainting. Cole was taken aback. He never thought his son would have the backbone to actually confess to her like that this early. Yeah, he knew. Naruto was just as enamored with the girl as S.H. was with him. They were just both so shy and dense that neither of them caught on to the other's feelings. Cole let out a similar sigh and then gave a slight glare to all the onlookers. Once he caught their attention he nodded his head to the door and they all quickly nodded and left. Cole followed after the group but not before smiling at his son. Good job champ. He said causing Naruto to look up and explode into a massive blush. He looked around and took in his location gaining an even bigger blush until one could almost see steam coming from his head. Cole chuckled at the boy's embarrassment and walked out. After a few minutes Hinata stirred and woke up. Still in Naruto's arms. Once she righted her dizziness. She looked around and her eyes landed on Naruto. She then remembered why she fainted. She squealed and wrapped her arms around the boy's neck and hugged him tight. After a few seconds he tried to choke something out, they may have been words, but, who knows. He was tapping on Hinata's shoulder. She soon caught the hint and let her grip on him loosen, not letting go completely. He took a few deep breaths and looked into the girl's eyes. As so, D does that and mean. The poor boy stammered. Hinata smiled at him and rest her head on his shoulder. You don't know how long I've waited to hear those words, Narukuen. She said softly. Naruto smiled. He closed his eyes and hugged her back, fighting back tears of joy. And you don't know how long I've been trying to say them. He whispered back. They stayed that way for a few minutes before Hinata leaned back a bit. Her happy smile quickly turned into a frown. But if you ever get hurt like that again I won't forgive you. 
she hopped and popped out her cheeks in mock anger. I can't make any promises, Haim. You know what I'm like. Trouble just seems to find me wherever I go. He responded. She pouted at him and puffed out her cheeks again. Promise! She said to him, not taking no as an answer. Naruto shook his head lightly, smiling at her drive to make him make a promise he couldn't keep. Okay, okay. Haim, I promise I will try to never get hurt like that again. She continued to puff out her cheeks in an angry pout. Naruto smirked. You know, have I ever told you how cute that face you're making is? Hinata's expression quickly turned into an embarrassed blush and she looked down. He just laughed and pulled her into another hug. His happiness quickly turned into a frown when a thought hit him. He'd have to tell her now. He thought for a moment and shrugged. I guess it's all or nothing. Hey, Haim, can you meet me at the usual place in about an hour? There's something else I need to tell you. He said in a calm voice, talking slowly. She instantly felt the change in mood and backed away from the hug. She looked up and saw the worried look in his eyes. She just smiled and nodded. I'll go see my family before. I guess I'll see you again in an hour, Narakuin. She turned to leave but leaped into another hug. I love you too, Naruto. She let go and hurried out the door. Naruto was waiting on the Hokage Monument on top of the fourth head. This was his and Hinata's normal hangout. His leg was shaking in nervousness as he waited. Another five minutes of nervous tension went by before Hinata showed up. She walked up onto the monument and sat down next to Naruto, a little closer than she normally would. So what did you want to talk about, Narakuen? She asked as she placed a hand on top of his causing him to blush slightly. He took a deep breath and started to tell her the truth. Everything. From Kurama to him being adopted. He even went far enough to tell her his true heritage. She actually took it quite well. She didn't once stop him, only nodding along. The only real reaction she had was to who his real parents were and that ended up being a wide-eyed eyebrow raise. After finishing up with his background he hesitantly told her what happened on the bridge. This, this was where she went off at him. She tugged on his shoulder causing him to look right at her. Smack. She smacked him, tears coming to her eyes. How could you? How could you do that to yourself? Naruto, you know that I would never want you to be like that. Does your own life mean nothing to you? At this point tears rolled freely down her face. Naruto, I love you. But I never, ever, want you to hurt yourself because of what happens to me. I love you too much to know you're suffering like that and I love you too much to know you're hurt or dying to not react like that. He shot back, tears welling up in his eyes. Hinata, when you, you died in my arms, I was lost. It was like a part of me had broken and turned to dust. The only thing that filled my thoughts were pain and loss. Hinata, I care for you more than anyone. You're my only friend, the one I love the most. I never want to see you hurt. It's too much for me. They stopped talking for what seemed like hours. After the moment they just had, tears stained their faces. I, I promise, Narakuen. I will get stronger. I will get stronger so you will never have to see me like that again. Hinata said, breaking the silence. She looked into his eyes and embraced him in another hug. She buried her head in his chest and leaned into him. Naruto wrapped his arms around her and held her. I promise Haim that I will be the strongest shinobi there is. I will never let anyone hurt you. I promise to never hurt you. I promise. I promise I will never leave you alone. I promise till death do us part. They stayed like that until the sun started to set. Hinata fell asleep in his arms so he carried her home and handed her off to her father and mother. Hannah gave him a knowing smile while her husband gave he a slight glare. Naruto bowed to them and left. 
the unspoken words were all given through their eyes and actions. Once he got home he walked into the house. I'm home, he called. When no answer came he walked into the living room where he saw his father passed out on the couch. He looked like he was foaming out of the mouth and had his eyes rolled all the way back. What the fuck? Dad, are you okay? He said as he rushed to his adoptive father. While he checked his vitals, Anko walked into the room. Oh, hey, Narakuin. She said to her adoptive son. The boy whipped his head to his mother. What's wrong with him? He asked. Anko adverted her eyes and started poking her fingers together. W.L., uh, I sort of told him that, uh, I'm sort of, kind of, pregnant. What? Naruto roared. I am gonna be an older brother. Chapter 41, Exams Part 1 While he checked his vitals, Anko walked into the room. Oh, hey, Narakuin. She said to her adoptive son. The boy whipped his head to his mother. What's wrong with him? He asked. Anko adverted her eyes and started poking her fingers together. W.L., uh, I sort of told him that, uh, I'm sort of, kind of, pregnant. What? Naruto roared. I am gonna be an older brother. Anko got a nervous smile and slowly shook her head in confirmation. Why yup, I guess you are, she said as she giggled nervously. Naruto looked at her with his eyes bulging making a good impression of a fish. He opened his mouth to say something but his eyes just rolled back and he fainted. Anko sighed. Why are they so much alike? She asked no one in particular. A few days passed and Anko and Cole went to the hospital to get this whole pregnancy thing checked out. After doing a few tests the doctor came into the room and smiled. Well, you are in fact 100% pregnant Anko-sama. And from what the tests say you have been for almost a month. Cole smiled and wrapped Anko in a huge hug. I'm gonna be a daddy, again. He cheered happily. Anko just smiled and accepted the hug. But after the initial explosion of emotion passed, she paled. W wait a second, this mean I can't be on active duty anymore. She wailed. No. I can't go that long without breaking anyone over at INT. She continued to wail as she began to cry anime tears. The doctor and Cole sweat dropped. W.L. Anko-sama, as long as you are putting yourself through any physical labor or putting yourself in harm's way, you can continue to work over in INT. The doctor clarified. Anko did a complete 180 on her emotions and caught Cole in a bone-crushing hug. Yay! I get to be a mommy while I get to torture people. She said and the only reaction she got was a sigh from the doctor and a choke yay. From Cole as his face started to turn blue fro and lack of oxygen. Oh, and one more thing, the doctor said as he began to leave. Congratulations, it's twins. Anko's eyes widened and she froze. Cole's reaction was to finally faint from oxygen deprivation. A few days passed and for Naruto, they were some of his happiest. He got to hear that he wasn't only going to have one new family member, but two. And even better than that, he and Hinata started going on dates. They mostly consisted of going out to dinner or picnicking on top of the Hokage Monument. Nothing too big, but for them, it was more than enough. Naruto was walking to the bridge where Team 7 usually met at before training and missions. They were able to get a week off due to their C rank turning into an A rank mission. They also learned at the mission debriefing that the reason Kakashi wasn't with them was because he was on his own A rank mission. Assassinating Gato It turned out that the day the fight on the bridge took place Kakashi went in for the kill on Gato. The other Jinin were surprised by that, but not Naruto. His father explained to him before he left to go to the mission what they were going to face and knew that the oracle had suggested to the Hokage that Kakashi be sent to assassinate Gato. When Naruto got to the meeting point he found Sasuke and Sakura doing their usual thing. 
Sasuke looking off into space, brooding, while Sakura would try and fail to get a date out of him. I guess some things never change. He mumbled to himself. Hey guys, he called to get their attention. Sakura stopped badgering Sasuke to turn and greet her other teammate. Oh, hey Naruto. She said. She got a mischievous glint in her eyes and smirked. So, you and Hinata, huh? I guess Ino owes me 50 Ryo. She said. Naruto paled and his eyes widened. H, how did you know? We haven't told anyone yet. He exclaimed breaking out in a nervous sweat. Sakura giggled. Do you really think two clan heirs going on a date wouldn't go unnoticed? She explained. In truth she had seen them heading into a restaurant and decided to stall observe them. Never found you to be a romantic type of guy, she said causing Naruto to break out into a nervous fit. After a little more teasing Kakashi showed up in a poof of smoke. Yo, he called giving them a lazy wave as he looked up from his porn. Sakura turned and pointed at him. You're late, she yelled at him. The other members on her team face faulted and sighed. Naruto shook his head and looked at her. Really Sakura you need to learn that he is who he is and no matter how much you yell at him he won't start showing up on time, he said trying for reason. She just hopped at him and crossed her arms. I know that. It doesn't mean I have to accept it. Kakashi raised his hands in defeat. Now, now guys. I've got some news for you. The Chunin exams are in two weeks and I am nominating Team 7 to participate. He said gaining their attention. Sasuke raised an eyebrow and smirked. Sakura looked a little nervous, but didn't react beyond that. Naruto had a huge smile on his face. Not only am I going to be a brother, I'm gonna be a Chunin. Yeah, the. He cheered and shot a fist into the air. Kakashi's eye bulged. Anko's pregnant. He said in disbelief. Naruto nodded. Twins apparently. He responded to his older brother figure. Kakashi blinked a couple of times, processing the information. Sakura turned to Naruto and raised an eyebrow. Congrats. She said. Sasuke looked away and just gave a grunt in reply. Kakashi shook his head and cleared his throat. Well, anyway, here's the forms you need to fill out. And by the way, we won't be meeting for now till the day of the exams. You are to do individual training. Sakura, Kurinai wants you to meet her at training ground A to train you in Jinjutsu. Naruto, I'm sure your father is going to take over training you. And Sasuke, I'll be training you personally. So, fill those out and I'll see you around. He said as he passed out the forms. Sakura was a little shocked that Kurinai wanted to train her in Jinjutsu, but even more shocked that they weren't going to be doing any missions for the next couple of weeks. Um, Kakashi-sensei? Why are we training as a team? The exams are a team competition. She asked as she filled out her form. Kakashi tilted his head thinking. Well, Sakura, your teamwork is already pretty good. In all actuality, I just need to get you guys caught up with Naruto. He said while scratching the back of his head. Sasuke glared at him. H.N., like I need to catch up to a dobe like him. I already have my Sharingan, so now there is no way he could beat me. He growled. Naruto just sighed and shook his head. Kakashi quirked an eyebrow. Really, when did you unlock it? When I was fighting that fake hunter Neen on the bridge. It helped me dodge and block a lot of his attacks. He clarified. He turned to Naruto and gave an arrogant smirk. So, how about it, Dobe? Feel like getting your ass handed to you by an Uchiha? He asked with a boisterous tone. Naruto just gave him a flat look. Sorry team, did you say something? He said mimicking Kakashi's voice. Sasuke ground his teeth and Kakashi was feebly fighting off an all-out laugh. Fight me damn it, 
the last Uchiha roared activating his Sharingan for added effect. Naruto sighed and shrugged his shoulders. Fine, but it's going to be the same whether your eyes are different or not. He then jumped from the bridge to the water running underneath. He stood on the water and looked up at Sasuke. Once you can do this I'll fight you. But for now, I'll see you around. He taunted Sasuke, knowing he couldn't walk on water yet. He then disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Sasuke roared in frustration. Damn it that dobe. He then looked at Kakashi. Well, let's get started. Kakashi sighed. What have I gotten myself into? So you guys are competing too? Naruto asked Hinata. They were sitting on top of the Hokage Monument watching the sun set over the village. She sat between his legs leaning her back against his chest. He had his chin rested on top of her head as they sat there. Yes, Kurinai-sensei nominated us. I think Team Ten and Nijinizen are also competing. She said as she snuggled up against him. Naruto gave an amused hum. Looks like there will be some challenge in this after all he said. You know, from now until the exams start my dad is going to be training me. You want to join us? I think mom could help you with you taijutsu and I'm sure dad could help with something. He asked. Hinata gave a thinking him and smiled. Sure, she said. I'll join you in training. I have to get stronger after all, and I can't let you get too strong without me. She said with a giggle. Naruto just smiled and hugged her again. Not so far away from the young couple two Kunoichi were watching from a hidden location. Ah, they're so cute together. Ino cooed. She gave a mock sniff and wiped away a fake tear. Sakura just looked at her. I think you owe me something, she said while holding out a hand. Ino sighed and handed her a wad of Ryo. You know... When you told me Hinata liked Naruto and we made this bet, I was thinking it would be a little longer before this actually happened. Not the day after you told me. She said in mock anger. Sakura just shrugged. She looked back to the young couple and sighed. If only Sasuke was like that. Ino sighed as well. Yeah, if only. After the two weeks before the exams passed Naruto was making his way to meet with his team. While walking through town he heard a yell. Jeez watch it brat. Hey! Put me down, a second voice said. Naruto decided to investigate and found an older boy in a cat suit and make up holding the Sandame's grandson off the ground preparing to punch him. Naruto dashed in to stop him. Kankuro was about to teach the brat a lesson when he felt cold steel pressed against his neck. Put the kid down make up man. A voice came from behind him. He got a tick mark on his forehead from the name calling. It's not makeup. It's war paint. He roared. The blade pressed even further against his throat drawing some blood. Drop him, the voice commanded. Kankaro let the kid go. His sister said. He looked over to her and saw there was a sword pointed at her too. He huffed and let the kid go. I was just trying to teach the brat some manners. He said as he turned to look at where the voice was coming from. He saw a shorter boy a little younger than him sealing away two black swords. He was giving him a piercing look with his cerulean blue eyes. Well, some people would have killed you without question for threatening the Hokage's grandson, the boy said as he walked over to Konomaru. Yeah, you better watch yourself you make up wearing freak, the little boy said as he stuck a tongue out at him. Naruto bobbed him on the head. Apologize. He ordered Konomaru. The little boy rubbed his head and sniffed. Sorry, he said as he ran off. Naruto sighed. Sorry about that. So, why don't you get the Achibi out of the tree so we can trade names? He said as he looked up into the tree to look directly at Gara. The two other sand siblings stiffened and paled. They didn't know that Gara was there and they also had no idea why the blonde boy knew about Gara's tenant. 
Gara landed in a swirl of sand in front of his siblings. You know about me? Mother is calling for your blood. But that has to wait. I am Sabaku no Gara. The red-headed boy said in a gravely voice. Naruto smirked. Uzumaki Naruto. Kurama says hi and a complimentary fuck you to Shikaku by the way. That's the end of this tale for now if you enjoyed like the video and with that being said I'll see you next time peace.